the Office of the Director of National Intelligence published a report Monday detailing how U.S. intelligence agencies are buying up Americans' data, including but not limited to one's personal attributes, private behavior, social connections, and speech of U.S. and non-U.S. citizens. The report revealed that these agencies are amassing the personal data unabated with little oversight and few guidelines, writing, quote, it can be misused to pry into private lives, ruin reputations and cause emotional distress and threaten the safety of individuals, even subject to appropriate controls. CAI can increase the power of government's ability to peer into private lives to levels that may exceed our constitutional traditions or other social expectations. The report's author further concluded that it could be a threat to Americans. Rising reached out to the office of the director of national intelligence for comment, but we have not heard back. So this is really concerning. I think uh, data in the hands of the government that's being misused or in the hands of corporations that's being used against our interests is always bad and always scary. And I think um, we should be just as worry about, worried about Google having our information as we are the U.S. government amassing this information and using it against us. Yeah, it's incredibly disturbing the level of personal information that the government is apparently not just collecting through its own intelligence surveillance means, but actually buying and purchasing for the uh, intent of using it against Americans. Uh, that's obviously no good. And I cannot stand the common refrain from some individuals in the government or even just uh, politicos who will say, if you have nothing to hide, then you shouldn't be worried, right? Well, plenty of people still don't want you peering into their bathroom while they're taking a shower, even if they look incredible, right? Because we have this sort of um, unexpressed right to privacy that the Supreme Court has upheld over the years. And um, the idea that, uh, you know, you're supposed to be living this perfect life behind closed doors so that it's no big deal if the government comes to look at your communications is just inconsistent with the idea of living in a free democracy. Yeah, when I think about like the Cold War era politics of the United States and the red listing of U.S. citizens, uh, it's a little scary to think that the U.S. government could have data on your personal communications and say, OK, these folks seem a little bit radical. Seems like they disagree with the ongoings of what the U.S. government is up to. This is anti-American. It's a threat to our country. This is treason. We're going to go and get these people right. It would be very easy to look at conversations among citizens where they're expressing discontent with government. And then they decide to take that kind of a, an approach to dealing with that kind of sentiment in the United States. That's really terrifying, especially the legislation that they just passed that was widely known as the TikTok ban, but would grant Congress the power to at will, at their discretion, decide to take down websites on the internet and web-based apps. That's a lot of power for the US government to have. And I think we need to get to a place where people own the rights to their data because it's their data. It's something collected on them. And this is one of the problems with not writing some new stuff to in interpret our existing amendments and our existing basic rights in the Constitution to some of the modern problems where it's not very clear cut. But I don't know if I would trust this Congress to write that amendment. I don't know if I would trust the Supreme Court to rule on this. We're in a really tricky situation where we have a lot of very, very old people in Congress who don't understand what is even meant by us saying the word data. And that is scary. It's also concerning when we have a very politicized justice system that seems to go against political opponents rather than real threats to the country. I mean, just in the past couple of years, we have the DOJ writing memos saying that Catholics who attend traditional Latin mass are liable to be domestic extremists. The Richmond field office even sending people to infiltrate Catholic churches. You have the arrest of pro-life activists for daring to picket outside of abortion clinics. You have the DOJ going after Donald Trump for withholding documents when it's exactly the same thing that the current president did back from when he was a senator and vice president. 
Um, so it's all very concerning because of the way that this information has repeatedly been weaponized against normal Americans. I mean, that's not to mention the fact that the FBI has all of these informants across uh across protests, which are First Amendment um, events held by American citizens, where they're there to potentially try to rile people up and get them to commit crimes. I certainly don't trust that apparatus to have any personal information on me, which I'm sure they already have tons of. And I'm sure I'm on plenty of lists, uh, but that doesn't mean I'm okay with it, right? Right. Yeah. I, I think back to the move bombing of 1985 in Co the Cobbs Creek neighborhood in Philadelphia. We shouldn't be allowed to bomb an entire residential neighborhood and set it on fire as the FBI. The U.S. government just shouldn't have the power to wage war against their own citizens based on the information they have about these citizens being potential political adversaries of this state. When we live in a country where we want a true democracy. And this is something that the founding fathers wrote quite eloquently about, that uh, faction is fire and, you know, we need it uh, despite it being fire. You know, it's something that can burn us, uh, but without it, you know, this whole thing ceased to exist, our democracy. It's necessary to have political factions in the United States. If we want to have this truly be a free society and a real democracy, we need the free exchange of ideas. And if some folks want to live in a neighborhood in Philly and allow their grass to be very overgrown and have this idea that they're living in a radical commune and they're not hurting anybody else, that shouldn't be a threat to the US government because it's, it's not. It's just people living their lives how they choose to in their residential area. And so it's really scary to think that they could use this data against us in a similar way that they have in, in the past, but the scale of data that they would have and the access to information from places like Google that are constantly collecting it on us, collecting it on us when we just use the website to make online searches, collecting it on us when we're using Gmail and entering our information and address. They can see a lot of our preferences when we're shopping online. They have an absurd amount of data about our behavior. And to think that they could have the data on our communications as well makes this even more terrifying. And we have to get to a place where people just have the rights to their data. It's that simple. A corporation should have to pay you to use your data. They shouldn't have to pay Google for it when they collected it on you just by you using their search engine or their Gmail app or their social media platforms. Uh, it's really uh, scary times that we have such little, little regulation and this is growing at such an intense speed. This brings to mind for me, for whatever reason, the recent death of Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, um, because of the fact that this was a guy who was, by all accounts, a genius who had a lot of potential and under the MK Ultra program was basically radicalized into this awful terrorist. I mean, that's not the people that I certainly want trusting with some of the most intimate details about my life. That wraps it up for us today, but Brie and Robbie will be back this afternoon, actually, for a very exciting interview with 2024 Democratic presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Thanks, everyone. Uh, make sure to look for us wherever you find your podcast. We'll be back with you next week on Friday.